Okay, so this is the um, the model with um, all of the sculpting, or at least the main sculpting done. And um, I've uh, I've only used the techniques that I've uh, shown you in the previous video or videos. Uh, with these grooves here, I used the lazy mouse to um, draw out these ridges, and uh, similarly up here. Um, just drawing out a ridge from each of these sort of nodules, uh, making them look almost sort of like the uh, uh, a gum line. Um, and between these uh, these nodules, I've um, used the lazy mouse with a um, holding down Alt for a minus um, a minus sign or a subtraction. Uh, the cavities that we had here. I've just um, swollen these out slightly by using drag rectangle and a simple um, rounded alpha like this just to uh, just to bring out a nice sort of bulge here which gives the suggestion of perhaps some sort of some sort of eye or a uh, um, some sort of uh, sack of fluid or, or, or some sort of biological organ there and uh, I'll be using that later on um, to uh, show you a, a trick when it comes to lighting your level with um, emissive textures. So in this lesson I'm just going to um, show you how to texture um, your mesh in ZBrush. Uh, now there there are other options that you can use. Um, you can sort of uh, make a simple texture here and um, bring it into Photoshop and then sort of make a more detailed texture and we might be sort of adding some finishing touches in Photoshop uh, anyway. Um, but I'm just going to show you the basic sort of workflow um, in order to uh, get a texture from ZBrush um, into UDK. You might also notice that in the grooves here I've also put a little bit of a texture and I use that um, the cavity map uh, or the cavity mask that we um, we discussed in a previous video. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually uh, fill this object with a color. Now the way I'm going to do that is if I um, move my uh, cursor around the uh, the color palette here you can see that the object is changing color and it's and it's an overall sort of color effect um, that's because we haven't filled this object with color yet so what I want to do at this stage is just to uh, come up with or uh, to um, find a color that I think would be good to sort of fill this object with um, if I was to keep with a sort of a Giga-esque theme, then I'd probably stick to sort of uh, blacks and uh, and blues. Um, but uh, to make this sort of more of a um, uh, more of a sort of internal um, uh, internal view of uh, some sort of biological entity, I'm going to make this sort of a nice uh, red red color to give it that sort of uh, warm blooded feel to it. So at the moment I'm going to pick a fairly dark colour. This is because we're going to um, uh, use this colour for the majority of the shading in our object and that that looks good for our shading. So uh, with our colour selected I come up to colour and I say fill object and um, with the object filled now if we uh, change color you'll notice that our object no longer updates and uh, when the um, the object is is filled with a color you can change to another color and using our standard brush switch off um, Z add or Z sub and uh, with RGB selected you can see that we can actually now draw um, right onto the surface of our object the way that uh, ZBrush handles this sort of texturing or drawing onto the object is that it um, is a form of poly painting. 
meaning that each polygon um, takes up the color uh, that we that we lay down and the um, the way to get a nice detailed texture is to uh, bump up our subdivisions to such a level that um, each polygon is basically like having each pixel of a texture. And you'll be able to see if I bring this down to something like uh, 4 and uh, and then draw, um, you can just see that there is that sort of, it almost looks like JPEG compression there. If I take it down further and start drawing, you can see that um, each of these, um, it's basically these points um, or vertices that uh, bring up or, or uh, accept color values. Um, and so drawing at this sort of lower level can sort of result in this very sort of um, cubism type design. But uh, once we boost up to the higher levels of subdivision, it will um, it will smooth out those um, uh, those differences, and um, and we'll smooth it to the polygons that we have available. One of the first things that I want to um, do is uh, well, I'll just get rid of the the colors that I've already put on there. I'm going to go down to my masking, and um, I'm going to mask by cavity and I will reverse this this mask and I'm just going to pick a slightly higher color than I used before and I'll go for something like that and then uh, with it properly masked off I'm going to go up to um, well yeah, we'll just we'll leave it like that. I'll, I'll go up to color and fill object, and you can see that we've got the um, the mask has uh, has filled out a a texture on all of the raised areas. Now, if I remove the mask, you can see that that's how it looks. Um, this texturing here is a little bit harsh, so what I might do is I'll just bring that mask back, and I will. I will click on the object with control held just to smooth out the edges of that mask slightly. And then I might bring my RGB intensity down to about uh, 50% and then I will refill the object with that color. And hopefully that will result in yeah, slightly less sort of harsh edges so we can't really see the pixels in our object now and you'll be um, you'll be seeing me use uh, cavity maps a lot in our object in this way just to get that object looking a little bit less less defined in that in that texture in the um, in the cracks there I'm just going to reverse that and soften it a couple more times and I'm just going to come back down to a nice sort of dark color and fill the object again and so yeah that's not too bad and that's a, that's a good starting point for us to uh, begin our texturing